one of the things you said is that you gravitate you gravitate uh, to in innovation and new operating systems and infrastructure. So now, and, and also you mentioned Google as in a verb, and and I think we're at a linchpin right now where the verb to Google is quickly dying, and AI is you know uh, you know GPT four or GPT five when that comes out. I think people are going to be interacting with their own personal AIs a lot more. So I think AI search in terms instead of Google search, I think that chart is going to go vertical. So is AI a new operating system that you're keen on? No, it's great. It's a great question. So, um, but definitively, no. AI is a tool. Yeah. AI is not new. AI is an 80. Eight zero year old success story. Right? The term was coined in 1955. 1980, right? I'm old, right? 1980 was the year of AI. Time Magazine cover story, the year of AI. 2000, Intel stock went up 20 times in one year, 20 fold in one year because their chip was going to revolutionize AI. Now here we are, and NVIDIA is doing the same thing. AI is a tool. At ChatGPT4, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. All it is, plagiarism. <coughs> it's a really fast plagiarizer. <laughs> it can search through information that's already been created. It can't create its own information. It searches through information that's been created and gives you back someone else's stuff. And it's beautiful and it's elegant and it's cool to watch but it's plagiarism. It's not human. It's not intelligent. The human brain is, is one of the most amazing things, right? It functions on less power than a light bulb, a single light bulb. Yeah. Right? A single AI search, a single chat GPT-4 search uses a gazillion jiggle, and it's not a gazillion, but yeah. some big amount of, of electricity. And, and computing power. No one's talking about that, and they're all worried about Bitcoin mining stuff. So, and it's not that AI isn't good, but it's a tool. And I go back to my 1977 yeah, old computer instructor. Now remember, computers in 1977 were like as big as my room here. And I had a computer instructor in middle school, and he said, uh, I'll never forget, a computer is as smart as a screwdriver, right? Computer doesn't have intelligence, or but it's going to have intelligence. Maybe, maybe, but really it's the programming that tells it what to do. Well, it can change its own program. Okay, fine, but let's, let's take this thing. ChatGPT can code. Well, <clears throat> it can. If something's already been created, <clears throat> a subroutine to calculate a formula, Yes, it can go back in time and search through all the history and it can code that faster than a human. Computers work faster than humans, fine. But can it actually take multiple subroutines and combine them in a way that your brain can say, you know, I really want to solve this problem. Or like our conversation, you had things you wanted to talk about, you sent me a list of questions. And I blew that up by talking about all kinds of other stuff. So now your brain takes information and says we go in a different direction. A computer can't do that. I don't. Believe. So it's a long-winded way of saying I think AI is a tool like spreadsheets or like word processing. It it does things that we want to do faster. But let's think about what, what an LLM actually does. It starts with a word and then based on the prompt tries to intuit or infer what the next word should be. Hmm. And then the next word and the next word. Well, how does the brain work? It's actually not what it does. It doesn't, it actually takes a, a set of information that we have. It makes connections. This is the part I don't really even understand how it does it. And it makes connections that in many cases can be new, right? It's not based on old data. We're like creating new information uh, with, with our brain <clears throat> function. And it's interesting because it, it all started in the UK. So there's this guy, Jeffrey Hinton. Hinton. Yeah. 
who is like the, the king of, of AI, and he's the Google, and all the Googlers, and all the people that came out of Google and open AI, they all are Hintonites. But there's this guy, Carl, I always remember, I forget his last name, but they're both at, at uh, City College of London <clears throat> together. They're across, and Hinton was a computer scientist, and Carl, oh, what the hell is his last name? I can't remember, was a neuroscientist. Yeah, back to hard science. And he very elegantly says, Jeffrey's doing it all wrong, right? That yeah. is brute force, not elegance of neuro, neural systems. Yeah. So there's this this big debate about what's what is true intelligence and what is uh, uh, how does how does the brain actually function? And so yes, AI is artificial, but it's probably not intelligence. And yes, it's fast, and yes, it can do things like, like I said it can go back. And, and search through more information and give you an answer. <clears throat> but just because it can give you an answer, does that mean it's a good answer? Does it mean it's the right answer? Mm -hmm. And I'll give you the best example. The first time I signed up to, for ChatGPT, I typed in something that I knew something about. I said, describe the Hesper Yusko Scholars Program at Notre Dame. So my wife and I set up a scholarship program that we blatantly <laughs> stole, copied from uh, Carolina, there's something called the Moorhead Kane Scholar, which was modeled, blatantly stolen from, again, back to the UK, uh, on the Rhodes program, from Cecil Rhodes' will. And long story short, it said the Hesper Yusko Scholarship uh, gives full scholarships, wrong, we give half scholarships, and it was endowed by Frank and Joan Yusko. Like, <laughs> okay, well, my name's Mark, and my wife's yeah. name is Stacy. So it conflated. There's a guy, Frank, who's one of the bigger donors to Notre Dame, and he endowed the baseball stadium and a bunch of other things. Uh, hallucinated. And Joan Kroc, okay, who was, you know, Ray Kroc from McDonald's, you know, wife, and she donated a bunch of money. But Frank and Joan are not <laughs> married. Mark and Stacy have a last name, Yusko. So it was total hallucination, total nonsense. And Will it get better over time? Sure. But the fact that that happened makes me then question everything that it gives me. It's like when you're reading the Wall Street Journal and you read an article in the first column about something you know about. You're like, well, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. That you go to the next column, you read it word for word. You're highlighting it. You're, you're underlining it. You cut it out. You send it to everybody. Someone else. Is going, oh, that's bullshit, that's bullshit, that's bullshit. So, anyway, um, AI, it's, it will do things that are great. It will give us more of our time. And here's, here's the thing. Back to Bitcoin. Why is Bitcoin so important? Bitcoin does something that AI is also doing. It unlocks the greatest asset in the history of mankind, which is human creativity. Well, what do you mean? How does it do that? Well, what an AI does, if you think about it, in the olden, olden days, there were no grocery stores, right? We'd have to go hunt for our food. We would forage and <coughs> gather. And a bunch of our day was spent on survival. And as we got more civilized, we spent less time on survival and we could do more things that were creative. We could create businesses. We could create commerce. We could create, you know, peace. So all of that... Everything that AI does that, that, you know, we'll spend less time doing spreadsheets. We'll spend less time doing our bills. We'll spend less time talking to customer service reps. Awesome. That'll give us more time to create new things. Now, what's interesting about that is that well, AI is going to kill all the jobs. Just like every technology in history was going to kill all the jobs. Here's the thing. We've killed millions and millions and millions of jobs. There are more jobs today in the world than any time in human history. Fact. So... The same thing's true with Bitcoin.